Now let's talk about body cavities. And what I'd like to do for this discussion is to relate rooms in a house to body cavities. Uh, here I'm going to use an analogy. And I'm big on using analogies because it allows you to relate what you know to what you don't know, which or, or to a new concept, which I think is a very effective way to learn uh, new material. So everyone's familiar with a with rooms, right? Whether you live in an apartment or a condo or, or a house, uh, your house is divided into spaces and we call these spaces rooms. Now, why do we have different rooms? Well, we have different rooms because what occurs in the activities that occur in one space aren't necessarily appropriate for what occurs in another space. So for example, there are certain things we do in the bedroom and we do in the bathroom that we don't necessarily want to do, say, in the kitchen. We wouldn't want our toilet sitting beside our range, for example. In a similar uh, manner, we have our body divided into different spaces and we call these spaces cavities. Now let's look a little more closely at these cavities. We have two basic cavities of the body. We have the dorsal body cavities, which are located here on the dorsal side, shown here in sort of a gold color. Our dorsal body cavity houses our central nervous system. Central nervous system consists of the brain, which is housed in the cranial cavity, and the spinal cord, which is housed in the spinal cavity. Note that our entire dorsal body cavity is enclosed in bone. On the anterior or ventral side of the body, we have our ventral body cavity shown here in red. The ventral body cavity can then be subdivided into the thoracic cavity, which is the space that is above the diaphragm, and the abdominal pelvic cavity, which is the space which is below the diaphragm. The diaphragm, excuse me, the abdominal pelvic cavity can then be subdivided into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. I want you to note that while we do have a structure that separates the thoracic cavity from the, from the abdominal cavity, which is the diaphragm, there is no physical structure that separates the abdominal cavity from the pelvic cavity. The pelvic cavity sits a little posterior to the abdominal cavity. In just a moment, I'll contrast the contents of the abdominal cavity in terms of organs with the pelvic cavity. Let's look at the abdominal, excuse me, of, let's look at the ventral body cavity from an anterior view. Not intentionally trying to make things more complicated, but the uh, thoracic cavity can be subdivided into smaller cavities. So in this figure, we're looking at an anterior view of the uh, body cavities. Note that you can, uh, in this image, see the, part, uh, the cranial cavity from the anterior view and also the ventral uh, cavity from the anterior view, but we're going to focus on the ventral body cavities shown here in red. So here we have the thoracic cavity above the diaphragm, diaphragm here, and notice that it is subdivided into the pleural cavities, which are where the two lungs are found, right and left, and the uh, what's called the mediastinum. The mediastinum is this area here. The mediastinum includes the heart. Heart would be found here. And here in the superior portion of the mediastinum, this is where you would find the great vessels like the aorta. Uh, this, this space would also contain the trachea, also known as your windpipe, as well as your esophagus. Moving inferior, we can uh, again Observe the abdominal pelvic cavity, all of this from here all the way down to here. And we can see that the pelvic cavity is inferior uh, to the abdominal cavity. Notice where the pelvic cavity starts in relation to uh, the um, pelvic bones. Now let's look at the organs which are found in these cavities. 
This figure shows the major organs of the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. Recall that the thoracic cavity is that space that is above the diaphragm. So in this figure, the only organs that are in the thoracic cavity are the lungs and the heart. All the other organs are in the abdominal pelvic cavity. Because the abdominal pelvic cavity is so large and there are so many organs found there, we can subdivide the abdominal pelvic cavity into smaller regions. This slide allows you to see exactly where the organs of the ventral body cavity are found. Let's focus first on the thoracic cavity. Thoracic cavity separated from the abdominal cavity by the diaphragm. So that would fall about right here. So your lungs and your heart, of course, would be in the thoracic cavity. Specifically, your lungs are in the uh, pleural cavities and the heart in the mediastinum here. And then below the diaphragm, that's where um, uh, you find most of these most of the organs of the gastrointestinal tract. So your liver, your stomach, your small intestine, most of your large intestine all found in the uh, abdominal cavity. In terms of the organs found in your pelvic cavity, that would include the sigmoid colon, which is this part of the, the large intestine here, your rectum, and although not found, not shown in this image, your reproductive organs, as well as your urinary bladder would be found in the pelvic cavity. Now at this point, I don't want you to uh, worry about well, which organs are found in the abdominal cavity and which ones are found in the pelvic cavity. That's something that you'll learn throughout the semester and then on into ANP2. Uh, as long as you can differentiate between which organs are found in the abdominal pelvic cavity and which ones are found in the uh, thoracic cavity, I'm happy. And then within the thoracic cavity, know that the lungs are found in the pleural cavities and the heart is found in the mediastinum. The entire ventral body cavity and those cavities within the ventral body cavity are lined with thin layers of cells, which are called serous membranes. In this figure, notice we have serous membranes lining the pleural cavity as well as serous membranes lining the mediastinum. We'll talk about the specific names of these membranes in just a moment. These membranes consist of two layers. The parietal layer is the layer that lines the actual walls of the body cavity. The visceral layer is actually attached to the outside of the organs of the ventral body cavity. So you have two layers, one layer that lines the body cavity itself, and then a second layer that's actually attached to the organs in the ventral body cavity. A way to think of this is imagine that you're going to take your fist and push it down into a partially deflated balloon. All of you should be familiar with the deflated balloon. You know, after you blow, blow a balloon up, after a while, you know, some of the air seeps out and it partially deflates. And you could take your fist and push into one side of that balloon. And if you pushed far enough and deep enough, you could almost have one the side of the balloon that's touching your hand touch the other side of the balloon. Well, in this analogy, your fist would be like the organ and the, the side of the balloon that is up against your fist would be like the, I'm sorry, the visceral layer of the serous membrane. And then the portion that would be, say, attached to the outer wall of the cavity, that would be the parietal layer of the serous membrane. And in between, we have a potential space that's filled with fluid. 
this fluid allows the two membranes to slide past one another so as those organs are moving around there's minimal friction between the organ and the walls of the cavity and also minimum friction between one organ and another organ serous membranes have specific names depending on which specific cavity in which they are found so for example the serous membranes lining the pleural cavities are referred to as pleura you have the parietal pleura which is the outer layer that actually uh, lines the pleural cavity and then actually attached to the lungs is the visceral pleura surrounding the heart we have the pericardium and you have the parietal pericardium that's attached to the wall of the mediastinum and then you have the visceral pericardium which is actually attached to the outer surface of the heart itself the serous membranes which line the abdominal cavity are referred to as peritoneal membranes or simply the peritoneum the parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal cavity and the visceral peritoneum is actually the uh, layer that's attached to the organ so attached to the liver attached to the small intestine the stomach large intestine etc there are also membranes that line the dorsal body cavity these are called meninges so what you're looking at here is a section from this is a frontal section of the skull and a portion of the brain so here's the scalp below the scalp we have the skull and below the skulls surrounding the brain are the meninges now later on you'll learn these meninges have several layers the dura mater arachnoid mater and pia mater at this point uh, don't worry about those just know that they're collectively referred to as the meninges and they line the dorsal body cavity and surround the organs found in the dorsal body cavity and that includes the spinal cavity so yes there are meninges that also surround the spinal cord and here they are here now these meninges can be infected by a virus bacteria or even fungi and then they become inflamed and that's when someone has the condition known as meningitis and if they're specifically you have inflammation of the meninges of the spinal cord that's referred to as spinal meningitis at this point i simply want you to know that there are membranes that uh, line the dorsal body cavity and surround the organs of the dorsal body cavity and that they are called meninges